Hello and welcome to Tiny Table Talk for The Challenge, Season 38, Episode 12, the final Tiny Table Talk of 2022, the final video on Angel Cake Entertainment for 2022. I have a lot to talk about in this video and a lot to go over, so let's jump right in, starting with... What the f was Tori doing this episode? What was the thought process? My only thought was that Tori was going to talk to Jordan so close to the elimination to be the last person in his ear and kind of like in other reality shows, kind of like Survivor, being the last person in somebody's ear, you can maybe persuade them to go one way or the other. And Tori goes to talk to Jordan about not voting in Fessel, where Jordan was already planning on not voting in Fessel, but her leveraging their relationship, friendship, whatever it is, in a way that rubs Jordan the wrong way to go the exact opposite of what Tori wanted is just laughable to me to think about. But it's also, I think, pretty ridiculous it was like the worst move that tori could have done in that moment i mean we saw fessel talking with jordan and jordan was like i promise i won't say your name you did me a solid i'll do you a solid now i do want to bring this up that if tori and jordan's conversation jordan was kind of i want to say easily swayed by this one conversation that he and Tori had right before the elimination, I feel like Jordan was more 50-50 on this decision than what he is letting it be known, than what the edit is showing, that he was more 50-50. That I think he was looking for any and all excuse to vote in Fessel. I think he understood the deal that Tori made when they first were split into pairs and it was a guy's day and they decided not to send Jordan into the elimination. But I also want to throw this out there. Because it made me think of that deal. It was mainly Tori who came up with that deal. We, besides this episode, really haven't seen Jordan and Fessel talking with each other. Kind of like solidifying a deal that, hey, you didn't say my name. I'll definitely not say your name. I won't say your name. Just don't say my name. We didn't see that, at least, as an audience. Maybe it happened off screen, but... For us as the audience, we never saw a conversation, a deal, a handshake between Jordan and Fessel. To where, if Jordan hadn't said two hours before, hey, I won't say your name, don't worry about me, I got you, Fessel, he would have been in the clear. And I think this is where Tori gets the most frustrated because, one, she's getting put all the blame on by Jordan with his decision when it is his decision. And then, on the other hand, She's the one that made the deal. She vouched for this deal. She vouched for Jordan, which now it looks like this was her miscalculations. How can we trust you now, Tori, moving forward, not only just in this season, but later on in future seasons when you're vouching for somebody? I'm not going to be able to trust you because this deal backfired in my face. I also find it pretty interesting that this is what the proceedings look like after what just happened last week. Because we know that Jordan is frustrated. I mean, we didn't get to hear a ton of it this past week's episode, but we know that Jordan is frustrated after what happened last week with Norris and her being the direct vote in, and he felt that that was more of a personal move via Tori and Anissa for voting in Norris and getting her sent out of this game. And now, on top of that, after all of that happening... Tori comes over to Jordan trying to strong arm him and leverage their relationship for him to save Fessel for her game. And it's like, what now? For what's what's best for your game? Somebody that I'm sure Jordan isn't a huge fan of, especially given the history between him and Jordan, Fessel and Tori, and then that also brings in Fessel and Jordan into the mix. How messy this triangle is and coming off of what just happened last week like if tori wouldn't have done the most in this moment she probably would have gotten her way and had nelson be the direct vote what the hell are you doing tori why why are you doing this like go talk to him maybe see where his head is at get some information and then let people know 
and maybe like ask him if he's thinking one way, then maybe go another way. This to me was a bit over the top. And to me, this crossed the line where you're now fudging up and blurring lines of what's in the game and what's personal. And I don't like that. I hated that. I hated the idea of I'm going to leverage our relationship. Whatever is left of this relationship. The last time we really saw them talking together, they were having a blow up in their room, you know, and they kind of walked away from each other. And we haven't seen them talk at this length, at least for quite a while. So to me, maybe they did try to rehash something. Maybe they had a conversation after Narice left. Maybe they were going to work on their friendship. And then why would you leverage a friendship that is now trying to be recovering, trying to grow, maybe is a little seedling, and now you're going to leverage that for any sort of power? If she would have just left it alone, she would have gotten what she wanted. But she went too far with this, in my opinion. And I just, I, I don't condone it. I don't like it. I didn't like how that conversation went. I didn't like how she went about it. And I don't know, it made me feel icky. I didn't like it. I didn't like it whatsoever. I thought Jordan did what Jordan wanted to do. And you know what? I think he shouldn't have said anything to Fessel two hours before, but I also like that he decided to send in Fessel anyways. I think he wanted to, but then felt like obligated because of the dealings that they had earlier when they didn't vote in Jordan, but Jordan wanted to send him in. And I think he was looking for any and all excuses. So Tori gave him that excuse on a silver platter, which I think he, like any guilt or anything, just kind of washed away. But I'm happy that Fessel got to see an elimination, was the main vote. We got to see him tested in something other than a hall brawl or a pole wrestle, and he came out on top. So you have to give Fessel his flowers, but I still don't like how any of this conversation went about. I also would like to see more of it where we got to see more of the conversation more in depth. I would like to see some unedited footage, but that's never gonna happen. So yeah, that's just my thought process on it. But what about you? Let me know down in the comment section below. All right, let's now talk about people that I would consider one person is riding and one person is dying. And the person that I think is riding, riding high after this episode, I wanna say it's Devin. Devin, I think was very important to his team during this episode. He was the leader. He was motivating everybody. I think he was the person that stepped up. I was actually really surprised that him and Jordan, because when I found out that they were both going to be on a team with each other, I thought that they were going to really butt heads with each other. I felt like they were going to be the two guys trying to be the boss. Um, but Jordan has been able to kind of step back and be, I don't know, that supporting character, like almost like a first mate in a sense, whereas Devin really stepped up, got everybody to join in on the underdog cheer, which is this like hand mascot. They have a motto, they have a new team name, and it's all thanks to Devin uniting them and giving them a new inspiration moving forward into this daily challenge and into the possibly the rest of this game. Now, somebody that I think kind of failed this episode, and that is to me, Tori. I thought that she had a really strong showing in the past two episodes, kind of making deals, getting her own way, keeping Jordan safe, and getting Norris out. But this episode, I felt like she was a little bit more exposed. Her team loses. She's trying to save Fessel at all costs. Then she gets called out at the zone to where then she has this big argument in front of everybody going at Jordan. I just felt like this was a steep decline from where we saw Tori the last couple of weeks to then this week, and then we're heading into a women's day next week, which it it could be it could be bad news. I don't know. I, she didn't hit rock bottom, but she was very close, especially when Jordan was the one that, to call her out during the elimination voting. I am going to say that I am a little nervous for Tori moving on to next week's episode. 
Now let's read some comments from my Thursday's review and recap. And the first comment comes from Tyler, who says, that Anissa dive reminds me of when I whiff a tackle in Madden. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't catch it the first time I watched it. But when I watched the episode a second time for the review and recap video, and I just saw Anissa, it looked like she had her form down in the beginning. And then right when she went to like really jump off, she just went straight boom. The next comment comes from Shelby who says, I really think they made this to where the underdogs won because the two second difference in winning was weird to me too. It's always two seconds, you know? It seems like it's always two seconds. Two seconds, one second separates everybody. It's never anything weird. Like there's a 17 second time difference between the two team. It's a minute and a half. No, it's always like two seconds. A second or two seconds separates the team. The next comment comes from Jenny, who says, I felt pretty disappointed by Fessel and Tori's conversations with Mariah and Jordan. To me, it seemed very clear that they are willing to use guilt and manipulation of relationships to push themselves further. I've never liked how people have spoken of Tori, but I can't defend her this time. This was a shady conversation, in my opinion. 100%. Absolutely shady. I had to do a double take when watching this episode, because at a certain point, I was like, did she say that? Did she say what I thought she said? Is she really using their relationship, whatever is left of their relationship, to try to save Fessel here? Then we move to the zone when Jordan is giving his speech and he is relaying back to what he heard, which is exactly what I heard, but Tori is deny, deny, deny. It really wasn't a good look. To me, it was, it was... Shady. It was shady on all levels. LC05 says, I did a rewatch of the daily challenge and it looks like Nelson and Chauncey also missed the target. However, I also noticed that the target was being flopped around a whole heck of a lot by the helicopter. It makes me wonder if they decided to be lenient with how close they had to land in order to score the points as a result. I didn't think of that. It is rather difficult, and to me, I think Jordan was the only one that was really way off the target, in my opinion, after re-watching it so many times. I just wish they would have done something to combat that. Maybe keep it on the one shot, maybe outline like how I did in my review and recap, make a square in post-production so where if somebody fell close to that square that they had originally thought that the target should be, that then they could say like, oh, look, it was the air, it was the helicopter, this is where it would have been, this is where they landed, they would have touched it if they would have gotten there. That, to me, is way more transparent than what they do with the strategic camera angles and kind of just being like, yeah, everybody hit it, don't worry about it, everybody, everybody hit it, don't question it. So I think I wish they would have done that. Again, I'm always wishing for more transparency. I want the timers. I want a, a full shot. I, I get that it's like more cinematic if you move the camera angles at certain times to see the impact and everything. But there's other times where I just want to see like one straight shot to get the full story and context, you know? Carissa comes in with a comment saying, I'm sorry, but I'm so sick of Jordan and Tori's relationship taking center stage this season. Like, I know there are other things going on in this house that we aren't seeing so that the entire in-house portion of every episode can be focused on their toxicity. I agree, but I also think that this is the problem where you start voting out the more interesting people and personalities of every season early because then you're like funneled one storyline throughout the whole time. I mean, who else is left in this game that could be interesting now that Nelson, Norris, Kim, Colleen are kind of gone. Fessel has nobody to cuddle. Now Jordan has nobody to cuddle. I mean, everybody who has left is seemingly not doing a whole lot. Nobody's hooking up. Nobody wants to hang out. It's just weird. It's a weird situation now that we're left with kind of like just competitors. And so with that, they lean more so on the already started drama, which is Tori and Jordan. And that's the only thing that they have to put their pin in at this moment with drama because nobody else will start the drama. Bananas is too busy with Mariah, which they don't want to be seen on camera. So they don't get shown on camera all that much. Olivia Nelson is gone. Horacio Laurel is gone. You got 
Nani and Casey not doing anything. Kayla Quinn comes in with a comment saying, As much as I love Jordan, I've seen Tori's side of things for the majority of the game so far. As far as having to see him and Nerese in front of her, and also that throwing Nerese in was the best strategic move, even if there was a level of personal reasons as well. That being said, this move from her was weird. Jordan doesn't owe her keeping Fessel safe at all, and that conversation definitely felt like a threat. Yeah. And it's like, that's that weird thing of like, okay, Tori had a reason to say Nerese's name. One, it was the best strategic move, like you said, but also there was a hint of personal reasons as well. And we get to Jordan, and he could do the exact same thing. We've seen him be sort of revengeful, wanting to be spiteful against Tori. And so it's like, you took that shot at Nerese last week, you made it happen, it happened, she's gone, and now you're here trying to leverage anything and everything to save Fessel, somebody that you had a fling with. And Jordan could easily be like, what you did to Nerese, I can do to Fessel. He is one of your best players. He is a really strong player. His team needs him. And the best move is to send him into elimination, test him, and hopefully he can be walking out the door. Also, there's a hint of personal. It is tick for tack and... It's totally valid, in my opinion. Oh wait, Rich Gal comes in with a comment saying, did Mariah know something that we didn't? I'm asking because she said if she were to tie the votes, then the guy on her team could potentially go into elimination. I'm wondering how she knew that. Because she made the statement as if it were a fact the production tell her to burn her vote because they wanted to see Nelson versus Fessy. Now I want to know what happens if the votes are tied. I think that it is assumed that if the votes are tied then if it can't come to a unanimous decision or a decision as a team, then it's going to flip in reverse. Sort of like how uh, Amanda and Zach did in Final Reckoning. I think there was also a threat happened in Free Agents where if Nani and Bananas couldn't come up with a decision, then it would be them two going into the elimination instead of another group or somebody that they tried to vote in but was was but was split on it so i think it's just the assumption that if they don't come up with a vote or tie the votes then the roles would be reversed and team mariah would now be going into the elimination i don't think she knew something that nobody else did or that production came to her and was like you got to burn your vote you can't tie the vote because it was brought up in earlier when it was nelson and narice and narice wanted to vote in banani but nelson wholeheartedly didn't want to vote in Banani. And it was floating around the house that maybe if they couldn't come up with a decision, they'd be going into the elimination like previous seasons where Amanda and Zach had to go in because they couldn't come up with a definitive decision. Brianna Doe comes in with a comment saying, I think Nelson's poor decisions came back to bite him in the butt. If he would have stayed true to Amber and Chauncey, they might have saved him. And if he put Fessy and Bananas in the elimination against each other, he would have gotten one good team out of the game. Also, if he threw the last elimination, he could have saved Norris. A thousand percent. Now, I did listen to Bananas' podcast, majority of it, where he was talking to Nelson, and Nelson did talk about how he was frustrated that he won so many daily challenges because it really came back to bite him. But also, he had some pretty good strategy, which I was pretty sad to hear that Nelson did have strategy going into certain daily challenges, but then kind of went back on it. And instead of doing what he thought was the best game move, he did what he wanted to do via his heart. He talked about how he brought up to Fessel before the trivia challenge. He came up to Fessel saying, what if we just throw it? It's a women's day. We can lose a woman on our team and it keeps both of our original partners safe. Then later on, he came back to Fessel and says he can't do it. He went back on it because he said that he was worried about Olivia and he was worried about putting Olivia in jeopardy. Again, I think he got screwed over by how the format was. If they would have stayed in pairs, I think Nelson and Norris would have had a great shot, a great run to make it to these finals. And I think that they would have been lethal in the finals. But also, there's too many points in this game that Nelson... It sounds like had the right idea, but never put it into action because he was worried about a social standing. He was listening too much of his heart. He needs to cut that.
because he's done that for so many seasons and it's got him to this point. He needs to reflect on what is he doing wrong. I did see something different. I've seen flashes of greatness from Nelson this season with how he came out as a competitor, how he was viewing each challenge. He actually had some sound strategy when talking to other players. He just needs to put that in motion. He needs to stop thinking too personally and thinking about other people and start thinking about himself and get more strategy in his base level of competition and gameplay because that's what's going to set him apart and that's what's going to get him to another level in this game because right now he is like doing the same thing every single season and getting the same results coming up without a win and to me it's just frustrating because I want to see him do well. He was doing the best he's ever done this season and he came up short yet again. Fifi TV comes in with a comment saying, Aw, poor Nelly T. He was such a star this season. Very proud of him and his growth. The edit felt a bit too final. Similar to Leroy's retirement season, but happy he got the shine he deserves. I will say that I almost shed a tear, especially when he was saying sorry to his fans family and friends at the end saying that he felt like he let everybody down. Um, he did a great job. I don't think that I understand where you come from that this felt a little too final. I think that you, they were just giving Nelson a send off because this was it. This was definitively he was walking out of this game this episode like Norris is out. The twist is done like they are completely out of this game. So they wanted to give him like the full on goodbye. He's also done a really great job. We also heard that he's one of TJ's favorites at the end of this episode. I think that this goodbye is actually not to be sad, but it's to be like, oh yeah, this is Nelson and you're gonna be seeing more of him in the future. And the last comment comes from AZ Master Baker, who says next week is going to get spicy. Finally, some fireworks. Let's hope. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because it seems like there's going to be some tears. There's going to be some yelling. There's going to be some anger. And I'm wanting it. I want all the drama. Please don't edit this out. Please, let's have some good spice. And other people yelling at each other. That's not named Jordan and Tori. But we'll have to wait and see. But that is it for this video. The final Tiny Table Talk of 2022. I just want to say thank you to everyone who is watching this video up to this point. I also want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelkvids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge content, more content in general coming at you with a ton in 2023 but until then peace and happy new year